Yeah, so welcome. Here we are at the Wednesday night service for Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living. I am Reverend Nan Bankston, and I want to welcome everybody for being here. Um, this is just a wonderful evening. It's hot outside. It's getting to be summer. And so I'd like to get our service started with Paula, if you would kindly be our practitioner and do our little prayer and meditation for us to get it get us going here. Thank you, Reverend Nan. That's my honor. So I'd like everyone to go ahead and move into the space of the divine, the space of spiritual magnificence, that space that is closer than the beat of your heart, that is closer than your breath, that is at one with the all there is. And from that space and place of magnificence, I want to give great thanks for everyone here tonight. I bless this time and I bless this space, knowing that all that needs to be said is said and all that needs to be heard is heard. And so with, with great joy, I release my word into the law and together we say, and so it is. Now I just have a short, short little paragraph I wanted to read, then we'll do a, a minute or so of meditation. And this is from the Science of Mind magazine for April 25th. So without regard for what you are receiving, Decide from now on to be a giver of life. Decide that you will be the one who brings the love, beauty, and grace to every situation. You will be the one to shine the light wherever you are. You will be the instrument through which great healing happens. And so focusing on that, we're just going to Meditate for about a minute. And now gently coming back into the room, we welcome Reverend Nan's talk for tonight. Oh, thank you, Paula. That was a lovely interlude there. Beautiful prayer to open us with. Well, welcome and happy Wednesday evening. This is a really special time tonight because we will be on hiatus now uh, for the Wednesday service during spring now and through the summer months. You know, I originally started this service last October because we were coming into the winter with more months of not being able to gather. With the unpredictability of COVID, we weren't sure how to stay connected through the darker months of the year. So this was a way to keep us connected midweek through those longer days, and we have done that. So now with the weather changing, the days are longer and the barbecues are calling and there's a lot of outdoor activity. So it's a good time to return to the outdoor life and be in nature, even if it's only sitting on your own porch or hanging out in your own backyard. As we move into the month of May and summer, some restrictions are easing, and we look forward to the reopening of our center sometime this summer. And, you know, in many ways, that means we're stepping into the unknown, which is our monthly theme. And as we wrap up May, I mean April, which is this month, um, we're still in that theme of stepping into the unknown. And tonight, my talk title is Living Your Spiritual Magnificence. Now, oftentimes that requires stepping into the unknown and letting go of old thoughts, behaviors, and ways of being. I use the quote by Joseph Campbell, 
for a little sneak peek into this week's talk. And he said, we must be willing to let go of the life we had planned so as to have the life that is waiting for us. So just think about that for a minute. We must be willing to let go of the life we had planned so as to have the life that is waiting for us. The life that we have been seeking and that has been waiting for us is spiritual magnificence. We live in this world of human condition, yet we are centers of divinity. Our very essence is that of spirit, which is a field of all consciousness and infinite possibilities. Yet we come into this world, into a family or an environment that automatically sets boundaries and limitations for us by the experiences of everyone around us. Our understanding of who we are, what we are, and what we can be capable of is shaped, even limited, by the perspective of others whom we trust and upon whom we depend. We inherit a human blueprint of physical genetics, environmental influences, and thoughts and beliefs based on the limitations of generations of others. What we have forgotten is that we intended to come in to remember our spiritual magnificence and return to it and live our lives in alignment with the divine essence or spirit within us. Now, when we connect with spiritual principles, such as this one from our what we believe statement, which says, we believe the universal spirit, which is God, operates through universal mind, which is the law of God and that we are surrounded by this creative mind which receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it. When we practice our principles, we realize that we have the power to create our own lives according to our words and our thoughts. Nothing sounds easier than change your thinking, change your life, right? And nothing can be more fearful and intimidating. Sometimes we've been taught that if we just have enough positive thoughts, our lives will change miraculously. And when we try really hard to have only positive thoughts and nothing changes, it can be really disappointing and frustrating. I had a good friend, Jimmy, <clears throat> when I lived in New Mexico. And now Jimmy loved the horse races and going to the track. And he would place really big bets, something that I would never, ever do. Now, most of the time, he won. And one day, I told Jimmy I just couldn't take big risks like he did. And I remember so well what he said with a big smile on his face. He said, well, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. Now, please understand I'm not encouraging large-scale wagering here. Rather, it is the concept of being willing to be on the edge of newness that I took from that statement. I've used Jimmy's advice in many instances as I lived on the edge just to continue exploring and connecting with my spiritual magnificence and moving out of my perceived limits and discontents. You know, in religious science, we don't deny that a condition exists. We deny that it has to continue. In keeping with another of our spiritual principles, we are always at choice. And we can choose to stay in the condition, or we can choose to risk stepping out, choosing freedom, and being that which we were called to be. And what we are called to be is the magnific magnificence of our spiritual being. Each of us is a unique emanation of that one infinite universal presence. And as such, we do live in a field of all possibility. However, we may forget who we really are. We may forget the creative genius that exists at the center of our being. Dr. Holmes writes in this thing called you, the greatest gift life could have made to you is yourself. You are a spontaneous self-choosing center in the great drama of being, the great joy of becoming, the certainty of eternal expansion. You know, we were never created to play small, be less than, treat others as though they are less than, 
or live in fear without confidence in our true nature. When we remember our divine heritage, when we connect with spirit within us and commune with it through regular spiritual practices such as prayer, meditation, contemplation, listening to uplifting music, being out in nature where we see God in everything, our spiritual eyes open and we can choose thoughts that magnify the good in our life and encourage us to play big in life. You know, last month we talked about spirit's vision for our life and taking the time to be connected to that through visioning. Using visioning, we can become aware of spirit's vision, welcome it, and begin to live it. Principle, which is really another word for spirit, God, the thing itself, is our life center. It is our operating system, much like the ones in our computers, our cell phones, and other digital technology of today. Another of our spiritual principles is that principle or spirit is never bound by precedent. This is really exciting to me and it's always been one of my favorites. Because we are spiritual beings, we are never bound by precedent, which means nothing that we have ever experienced in our past dictates or can control how our present and future must be just because it happened before. It doesn't matter where we are in our lives, what successes or failures we may have thought we had. We are always living in a new moment in time where we can be consciously aware of our thoughts, make the choice to pivot to a new focus and shift our awareness to the truth of who and what we really are and a life we can create. And what we really are, are spiritually magnificent beings. We can choose to express our lives in spiritual qualities of love, light, peace, power, beauty, and joy, and create everything new, as Daniel Namod sang in our opening video. So I invite each of us this week to spend time considering our spiritual magnificence. Don't be shy and don't be fearful. The light that shines within you is bright and eternal. You cannot fail. Live, love, laugh, and be happy in your life. For there is only one life, and that life is God's life, and that life is perfect, and that life is your life now. And it always has been. And so it is. And so, if you'll just join me for a moment of prayer, let's celebrate that one life. Let's just bring to mind that infinite loving presence that is that one life that is God's life. I know that it exists in each and every one of us, and it is perfect. And our lives, our lives, our lights, are designed to illuminate and lift us up into a new way of being. All we have to do is choose a new thought and move with the assurance that we are one with all that is. And so as I come now with these words of unity, of harmony, of peace that exist in and among all of us here and everyone who is not, I speak a word of blessing upon all, all unique beings on this planet, all creation, knowing that, that everyone can celebrate their spiritual magnificence, that everyone is a spiritual being and that their divine heritage is spiritual magnificence. And it doesn't matter how small that form takes or how large that form takes. You are, all people are unique emanations of the divine. And so I bless each being here. I bless those who are not within the sound of my voice. And I just know that every person is blessed with love and peace and joy and harmony in their life now and eternally. And so with these words, with great gratitude, I simply release this word into the law that always says, yes, my beloved's yes. And so it is. 
And so let us take our offertory. We'll have a little moment of celebration for our prosperity. And now what I have to do is get our little celebration, prosperity affirmation up here. And if you wanna take your gift in your hands, put it over your heart. And I just wanna take a minute to celebrate the prosperity of everyone in our center, the abundance that has kept this center going and the generosity and the love of spirit that has allowed us to continue through some very adverse conditions and we have thrived. And so have our, so have all of our spiritual family. So if you'll join me in saying this little affirmation, taking your gift, I celebrate my spiritual magnificence by sharing my prosperity with all. And we can say that again. I celebrate my spiritual magnificence by sharing my prosperity with all. And now I just want to take a moment to bless those gifts. And I receive these gifts with great love and joy. For this is pure love of spirit in form, in energy of money and source and time and talent and treasure. And it is given with open hearts and absolute abundant flow. And that abundant flow is returned for we live in a reciprocal universe and for everything given, it is known that it will return to the sender a hundredfold or more. It is absolutely certain. And so I bless these gifts, I bless every giver, and let it be, and so it is. And you know, we usually, you know, we usually do our little candle lighting ceremony for inclusion. But because this is our last recording, or our last, our last recording, I'm reading recording up here on the Zoom sheet, um, because it's our last service for the summer, uh, for right now, um, I decided I was going to do a final video just to remind you who you really are. So hang on here. And so there you have it, my friends. Now we can unmute. Just remember you are a child of the universe. And Thank now you, you are welcome. And now, as is our custom, we can say nighty night. Nighty night. <laughs> nighty night. Nighty night. Nighty night. Thank you. And we'll Thank see you, you next time.